Since the 1900s, when a young Scottish immigrant entrepreneur helped turn America from the frontier and gently urged the nation to embrace a manufacturing economy, the worlds of science, business, labor, and public policy have come together in this new century, sometimes at millennium speed, to produce a cornucopia of new goods and services and spur yet further productivity and advancement. Andrew Carnegie, founder of Carnegie Mellon University, didn't live to see his name become a household word in America, but it wouldn't have surprised him. Before the turn of the century, when the vision of most Americans stopped at the county line, steel industrialist Carnegie saw the world as his market. Today, his vision continues as Carnegie Mellon faculty, researchers and students continue to develop novel ideas that will reshape the way we live and work. Researchers at Carnegie Mellon's top-ranked College of Engineering are working on a variety of challenging projects, from what will replace silicon-based computer technology to will we still drive our cars or will our cars drive us? Not that today's car is any slouch. We already have onboard navigation systems and infrared night vision. But just around the corner are cars that will drive themselves. We are leading the charge. We are also looking into the power of nanotechnology, a single technology so incredible that it can fight disease, stave off aging, clean up toxic waste, boost the world's food supply, and build roads, automobiles, and skyscrapers. But it's not just the man-made world we are studying. We have also turned to the natural world to see how technology mirrors nature. Our nanorobotics lab is mimicking the movements of vampire bats, bees, and hummingbirds to develop robots that can protect us and ultimately improve our work environment. And because the world is becoming a very complex place, our engineering researchers are creating systems that can help nab intruders with biometrics. We have developed a new tracking system that uses the iris of the human eye as a facial fingerprint to trace and detect terrorists or cyber criminals. So with all this tracking and detection work, will we see the end to privacy? How can we secure our personal data? Scottish industrialist Andrew Carnegie probably never dreamed of all the innovative inventions and research his namesake university continues to foster. Technology is moving fast. We understand the importance of controlling and helping consumers better adapt to these self-accelerating technologies. The economic destiny and prosperity of entire nations may rest on one notion. Can we improve information technology? Take, for example, the musical birthday card. Today's musical birthday card contains more processing power than the combined computers of the Allied forces in World War II. The future is now, and we are here to speed the process along.